This video will introduce you to the sketch environment in Fusion 360. Sketches underpin parametric 3D modeling development in Fusion. They are the easiest way to produce 3D forms in Fusion. This skateboard deck is simply created via two sketches and two extrusions at the top and the side plane. As you can see how I've gone through and created with that single sketch along with the side profile and then extruding to create the body. We'll now begin to explore the sketch options. You can find a copy of this file in the video description or create a new design as I've done here. You may wish to play, pause and explore the sketch tools as we progress through the video. To enter the sketch environment, select Solid, Create and Create Sketch. Select the plane or origin that you wish to draw on. Selecting the XY plane, notice the labels behind the view cube or selecting the ground. Your view may have changed to a front isometric like mine or a top view. I suggest change it to the top view so it's in line with the video as we proceed through it. You might have noticed that the toolbar has also changed to 2D tools and the sketch tab is visible. This notifies us that we're currently in the sketch environment. This video will specifically focus on the Create tab. In the playlist, there's a video that looks at the Modify and the Constraint tools. Let's begin sketching. I have labelled the tools that this video is going to focus upon. Firstly, we're going to look at Point. So let's zoom in there, just using the scroll wheel. Points can be attached to paths or shapes or just regularly within the drawing uh, board where dimensions and constraints can be assigned to later. So to create a point, go to create and then point. So we can draw them in the, on the canvas or the drawing board along a path or along a shape that we call a profile or within it. Now moving down to the line tool. The line tool is primarily used to draw paths or using multiple joining lines to create a shape. To create, go through and select create and then line or the hotkey is L. Select the starting point and the end point and continue. And you might notice that it's referencing there. To create a curve, click and drag from the last endpoint. To finish using the tool, just or any other of the tools, just press escape. Don't worry about assigning dimensions at this stage. This video is simply to explore the functions of the sketch tools. There is a video that focuses on the dimension tool. Notice in your browser, you now have a sketch. This might appear under here, which you can select and it will select everything along with selecting the timeline. If you have accidentally selected finish sketch, you may wish to re-enter the edit uh, phase or you might be editing other models to go through and do this, you can select the sketch in the browser or the timeline, right click, and you'll have an option where it says edit sketch. Now we're going to move on to rectangles. Whoops. The two point rectangle. This is the most useful tool to create rectangular shapes. We refer to these as pro profiles in Fusion. The hot key is R. To create it, go to create, rectangle, two point rectangle. Select the starting point and the diagonal. 
Notice that the shape is filled light blue. This now identifies this shape in Fusion. We call these profiles. These can later then be converted into 3D forms. There'll be a video based upon this. If it isn't filled, it mustn't be fully enclosed uh, or correctly enjoined. So make these changes. Also notice that the little icons that have appeared around the geometry, these are referred to as constraints. Other CAD modeling programs refer to these as relations. These will automatically appear by the creation of a path or a profile. Example shown here is a vertical constraint and a horizontal constraint. There will be a video in the playlist that focuses on constraints as they're extremely powerful. Moving down, we've got a three point rectangle. Not used as frequently as the other two options. To create, you're gonna go create, rectangle, three point rectangle. You select the starting point, the uh, what's that? width, and then the length. They're the three points. Moving straight on, we'll look at the center rectangle. This profile sketch with the center point and extends out upon that. So we go to create, rectangle, center rectangle, selecting the center point and receding out. Notice that a dashed line has also been included. These are referred to as construction lines in Fusion. They are used as guides only. They're not a path nor a profile that can then be later modeled. However, these lines can be changed into construction lines and vice versa by selecting, go to select, go to the sketch palette, turn on a construction line, and I can select that as a construction line and vice versa. The hotkey is X. Moving down, we're gonna look at ellipses. To create an ellipse or an oval, go to create, ellipse. Select the midpoint, select the length, then determine the width. Unfortunately, I've still got the construction line selected. So I'm gonna select that body and deselect that construction line. It will appear like this. And you'll notice that um, ellipses also include, naturally include a construction line. Moving out, now we're gonna move on to circles. In the center diameter circle to start off. Uh, the hotkey is C. To select a center diameter circle, you go to create, circles, center diameter. Select the midpoint and determine the radius. Fortunately, I've still got that construction line turned on. Turn that off. It will then appear like this. And this, the center line uh, sorry, center diameter circle is probably the most useful circle tool. Moving down, we've got the two point circle. Make sure I've got that construction line turned off. I do now. That's completed via selecting circle and then two point. Selecting the top, determining the diameter to finish off. Moving down, we've got the three point circle tool as shown there. To create them, you determine the top point, the diameter, and then the third point is the radius. It can be difficult carefully positioning um, the three point circle, so I wouldn't suggest using it as much as the other two. Selections in Fusion can be completed in multiple ways. However, the best way is just going to the select tool, the top right there. The easiest way is just to click on 
either within a profile or a path, the outline, and holding shift to select multiple. There are more advanced ways of making selections and they are similar to that of AutoCAD. Uh, and that can be depending upon the selection direction that determines what is selected. This can be really confusing if you are unaware of this option. If you select and drag to the left, you'll notice a blue dashed outline with yellow highlights. This selects all points, paths and profiles that the selection comes in contact with. This is best for selecting um, things really quickly and it will be selecting all items. Whereas if I click and drag out to the right, notice that it's a blue solid outline with an orange selected area shown. This selects points that are entirely covered within the path only. This is really helpful for selecting points or paths amongst larger paths or profile areas. So it's only gonna select that midpoint because I didn't select the whole path. So there's a little bit of difference there. To scale sketches, you need to go through and select the outline and click and drag from the outline. And that's the same with rectangles as well. So you can move it or you can select multiple. To move something, select the center point and then move it around. If it's a outline, or sorry, if it's a rectangle, select the whole thing, grab the midpoint, and then you can position and move it. Moving on down to the two uh, tangent circles, so the two point tangent line, sorry, circle. This can be completed via going to, and, and looking at tangents, um, tangents is a ge geometry term that means the point in which a connecting straight line touches the circumference of a circle. To complete this, you're gonna to go to create, then under circles, uh, two tangent circle. Select the two lines, and produce a circle based upon the radius from that. If we then move one of these lines, it will update our circle accordingly. We're now gonna look at arcs. We're gonna start off with the three point arc. The three point arc tool may feel familiar uh, to the pen tool in Adobe Illustrator in that you select under create arc three point arc the starting point the end point and then determine the curvature of the arc we'll then move straight down to the center point arc this is more of a difficult tool I've gone through an provided a example here. To begin, you identify the center point, then the starting point, then revolve around to the end point. Straight down to tangent arcs. To begin, we need to go through and create arc, and then tangent arc. Select from the end point of a line, select where the end of the arc's gonna be. And so if we update this line, it will also update the arc, as we can see there. So the tangent, it's always gonna be smooth from the straight line into the curve of the arc. Second last is a fit point spline. This creates the curved path, and then you're going to go through and select OK. So we're going to go create, spline, uh, sorry, spline, fit point spline. And we'll just do a bit of a zigzag here. 
and notice how it's creating the curve itself. Then when we're happy, you can just select OK or press exit. Um, the fit point spline may be familiar in terms of similar to that of the pen tool in Illustrator, that you've got points, they're not called anchor points, that is called points, and you've also, but you've also got the handles. So we can change the direction of the handles and sort of the intensity or the length of it, changing the intensity of the curve. Lastly, we've got is the control point spline. This is a different to the um, points created above in terms of the points that are created are more of a, a tension point and the curve doesn't connect to the spline points as you can see it sort of sits within the middle more tension can be applied as you can see i've just shown there generally these are more difficult to use the control point spline than the fit point yet there's uh, less points that are needed and generally creates a smoother curve. There are other sketch options to go through and explore under the create command. However, I've tried to provide probably the best and most common ones to go through and use. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you.